technical illiteracy is inexcusable. What do I mean by this? <coughs> People use computers and they don't know how computers work. And that's a problem. And they are stupid idiots and they are doing, well, almost wrong. But not necessarily morally wrong, but they are a problem and the problem needs to be solved. Let's look at it this way. Things that you deal with directly in your life, you should be knowledgeable on how they work. Because if you are not, then you are depending on other people to know about those things. And you are basically giving unnecessary control for other people over your life. With the computers, that's an easy example and that's what I'm talking about. <coughs> and how does this happen? Well, a computer needs an operating system and the operating system, it has the highest privilege, the highest access to everything on the system. It can do anything. Anything that a computer can do, the operating system can make the computer do. So, who controls the operating system is the one who controls the computer. So, who is the one controlling the operating system? Is it you, the user? Well, that depends on whether you can control the software. Chances are that if you're just a general person in the general population, chances are that you are not in control of your computer because most likely you are running proprietary software and you cannot control proprietary software because it denies you the freedom to do anything. It denies you the freedom to control your computing, so someone else is controlling the computing for you. You are basically giving up all of the control to someone else. And that's a problem because you directly deal with computers in your life and you are giving that power to someone else. And that's inexcusable, that is stupid and that needs to end. That is a problem. And you are a stupid idiot if you don't do anything about it. Here, here, here are the facts. You have a computer, the computer runs op an operating system, the operating system has the highest privilege, it controls the computer, who controls the operating system controls the computer. So a user who does not control the operating system does not control the computer, someone else controls it. So someone else has power over their lives, because computing, doing things on the computer is a part of your life. So if someone else has control over it, you don't control it. And someone else, someone else controls it, so they have power over your life. These are facts. So if you are giving power over your life to someone else, that's a stupid fucking mistake. And that's just a fact. Now, whether you value your freedom or not, now that's a personal belief you can hold. If you say that you don't value your freedom, you don't need to be free, you, you like to be in a prison. Well, that's reasonable. You, well, it's reasonable to the extent that you have the right to believe that way. You, have, you can arbitrarily value that if you want. If you don't want freedom, then you don't have to want freedom. But for, for the most part, it seems to me that most people do want freedom. So then, for these people, to not pursue freedom means that they are stupid. If you value freedom and you don't do anything about it, then you're just stupid. Or there's something else wrong with you. Because it does seem like to me that most people would want freedom. It is inexcusable. See, here's the thing. <clears throat> you might say that, well, I'm not interested in computers, I don't care about computers. Well, I don't care, you should be, because you are using computers. So. I already, I already established that. I'm not going to repeat it now. I'm not in the mood to repeat too much now. <clears throat> but here's the thing. You, some some idiot, idiot might come up with a stupid counter-argument. Well, why don't you learn about tractors then, Mr. Avova? Why don't you learn about tractors? Because tractors are important to society or whatever. Well, I don't directly interact with tractors. Although tractors are an important part of the society, they are used to product, produce food and food is important, I don't personally directly interact with a tractor, so I don't need to know how a tractor works. Whether I know about how a tractor is driven, how, how to drive a tractor and farm a field, whether I know about that or not doesn't necessarily directly influence my life. Now one could argue that it's useful to know because I might one day want to become a farmer, but that's a different topic entirely. The fact is, for now, at this time, I don't deal with tractors. So I don't need to know how a tractor works, for there to be any benefit to anyone. So, tractors for me are not necessary. But if you use a computer, then regardless of whether you are interested in computers or not, you are still directly interacting with a computer. 
So it's not a matter of, are you interested in computers? Who gives a shit? You are using a computer, you are directly interacting with it. Your life might depend on it very much, actually. Depending on how, just how much you use the computer. I, in varying extents, different people in, in these countries, Western countries especially, with their technology here, we have all this technology and to a large extent there is a dependency on this technology. You might pay your uh, bills on the computer or bank things and whatever else might be uh, of importance to you. All kinds of things on the computer and I can't now think I cannot think of it now off the top of my head, but you know there are important things on the computer. There are things that are on the computer that are important that important that people do. I, important things to people's lives. Computers are important. And you are interacting with the computer directly yourself. So if you are too stupid and incompetent to use that device of yours properly, then you are stupid. And that's all there is to it. You are not good enough. I, now, I, now, I, now I do want to repeat. It is not about are you interested in computers or not. It doesn't matter. You should be. You should know about computers. Because if you use computers and your life depends on it because you have to do all these important things on the computer, you should fucking know about the computers. At least enough to have control over it, to not depend on someone else. Do you really want to depend on some big American companies with their proprietary software? Do you really want to depend on them? Unnecessarily, there's no need for it. There are things in the society in, in society where you need to trust some people and you need to depend on other people. That that's that's how so, that's just how society works. There are some times when you need to depend on other people. But here it is not necessary. You don't need to depend on big American companies and their proprietary software. That's not necessary. It's not necessary. And because it's not necessary, you shouldn't give them the power for no reason. It is unnecessary and it is dangerous for everyone. There are many ways that it's dangerous. It's most relevantly directly dangerous to you because it's proprietary software. Someone else has control over your computing. They can arbitrarily do anything they want. Why are you giving such power to someone else? No matter how many stupid arguments you might come up with, but oh, but they wouldn't use, why the fuck wouldn't they use the power? And besides, here's the thing, even if for the time being, they don't necessarily have a reason to target you specific specifically to do something bad to, to you, even if there's no reason to specifically target you with some malicious intent, they can do it, and why should you give them the opportunity ever at all, under any circumstance, why? Even if they didn't do anything, even if hypothetically we could go 100 years without anything being done to anyone, why should you give them the power to do so at all, why? They can do so, but even if they don't, why should you give them the power? And also it's a big fucking stress to say that they wouldn't, because you, can, you don't fucking know that. What the fuck do you know what the companies might one day decide to do? They have control over your computing. The things you do, all the important things you have on the computer, whatever it is, everything that you do on the computer. Right now, after having heard this speech, write down all the important things you do in your life that depend on your computer. And obviously for those stupid idiots who didn't realize that their smartphone is actually a computer that is also a computer all the same. It's just a handheld computer that has a touchscreen. It's no different from a desktop computer, except in size. So you have write down everything you do on a computer that's imp important to you. Including your smartphones and all that. Write them all down. All the important things. And then, when you're done with that, think about this. Do you want some random big USA company, some big tech company, do you want them to have power over those things, over your life? Instead of you being in control for your own life all about those things. Look at those things you've written down and think about it. Do you want someone like those big tech companies, do you want them to have control over those things? They have the control. Whatever nonsense excuse you might think of, oh, but you wouldn't use the power to... They have the power over you. They can do whatever they want. It's a silly thing to say that, oh, but they wouldn't use it. They... Nonsense. Why are you giving up control over your life to them. Why? Look at those things on the paper. Why are you giving your control over your life to someone else over those things? Why? There's no reason. That's stupid. You shouldn't do that.
you should do something about it. Right away, right now, you should look into software freedom. Uh, first of all, toss that smartphone device of yours away, because there's chances are that there's no way to get free software on it, and then it depends on the specific smartphone models. Some some of them allow you to install a free software operating system on them. Yeah, whatever. <coughs> but I don't know anything about that. I don't have what is known as a smartphone. I don't have such a device, so I don't I don't care about those devices. So I'm not gonna say anything about how to install anything on those. But on a desktop computer, it should be an IBM PC derivative descendant, what many people would just call a Windows computer. A computer like that with an x86 processor, that's a good computer to have. There are other types of computers here, yeah. like the Apple computers, that's why I should specify it. Because Apple computers, the desktops are not a good option to go for. You should avoid Apple. You should just avoid Apple. And I said that they are IBM derivatives because I don't actually know what they should be called. Because really, these desktop computers that most people have that run Windows, they are derivatives of the IBM PC. So should they just be called IBM PC derivatives? Who knows? Uh, actually, I don't know what they should be called. All, all the people just call them desktop computers. But that's entirely irrelevant to this speed. Get one of those computers that is known to run Windows for most people, right? Get one of those computers, but instead of getting Windows, install GNU plus Linux on it. And that's a good start. And then keep looking into software freedom. Look up free libre software and research the philosophy. Free as in freedom, not free beer. The matter is not price, it is freedom. So free software means free as in freedom. It is freedom respecting software. So look that up and then just stop using proprietary software. Stop using proprietary software. For many things in people's lives are on the computer. Computers are very important. So for you not to have control over your own computers is just stupid and you shouldn't use such proprietary softwares, which which basically just take away your freedom in your own life. If freedom is to have control over your own life and you're giving control away to someone else, then you don't have freedom. So if you value freedom, then you should pursue software freedom. Right. And if you don't, you're stupid. It seems to me that generally people do seem to want to have freedom. So if the most of the people want freedom, but most of the freedom, most of the people don't have software freedom because they're too stupid to do anything about it. Well, that needs to end. And it needs to be brought to a fucking end. The fact is, in today's world, we have these functional GNU plus Linux operating systems. They are basically, at the very least, on par with technological ways of uh, Microsoft's Windows, or they are superior in every way, basically. Yeah, they are in every way they are at least on par or way superior. For the fo for the fo few random programs that are not made for the GNU plus Linux that don't run, because they weren't made for GNU plus Linux, and if some compatibility layer isn't good enough to get them running, well. Only a few people use such specific programs. So that's not the vast majority of the people. The vast majority of the people, they use a device and they watch a web, they, they use a web, web browser. That's what most people do, they use a web browser. So most people don't need to be concerned with those few programs that don't run on GNU plus Linux. So basically for the vast majority of the people, everything that they need to do can be done on GNU plus Linux. And it's at least on par, if not superior than Windows in technical ways, in every way. Oh, but they might be difficult to learn, someone might say. So someone might misinterpret that as the GNU plus Linux being a difficult operating system. No, 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 no. It's not any more difficult than something like Microsoft's Windows would be. The issue would be that because it's a new thing that you are unfamiliar with, it's a new thing you have to learn. But that's not a problem. That's not a problem with the operating system. That's just a, a life problem, like the DistroTube has mentioned. You know, that's just a life problem. You have to learn things in life. Anytime in, you, in your life you learn something new, you have to learn that new thing. It's, of course it's going to be, quote, difficult, unquote, to learn a new thing. But that's just a life problem. That, that's learning new things in life. That's difficult. But that's not a problem with the operating system. Don't mistake that as the operating system being a difficult operating system. Chances are that actually using GNU plus Linux is easier than win Windows. 
What I do is at least easier, but my use case might be very specific and might not represent the general population, but who cares? For the general population, I argue that it's easier to use GNU plus Linux than it is Windows. Because Windows is such a clunky, useless thing, it fights the user. Which is an example of how proprietary software is bad, because it doesn't allow the user to do what they want. It is oftentimes actively fighting against the user, because that's what it's designed. It's designed specifically to restrict the users. In more ways than one, the fact that it's proprietary software is one way. It denies the user's freedom, but also there are technical ways how they fight the user, like, you know, the Windows doesn't want you to uninstall by Microsoft Edge web browser, for example. The EU might have made recently a law that requires Microsoft Windows to allow the user to remove the Edge, but, but don't also make a mistake to just think that some EU will come to save, rescue you. No, it, no, it won't. If the EU makes a regulation that requires Windows to make the edge uninstallable, that's not good enough, that's not good enough, that's, that's a fucking joke. Yeah, what the EU should do is make proprietary software illegal, and make locked bootloaders illegal. Yeah, that's what should be done. But I don't see them doing that anytime soon. So don't wait for the EU to come rescue you, you have to res rescue yourself right now. So, yeah, that's probably all there is to this speech.